Okay, we're going to be working with things called polynomials. Does that ring a bell to you? Polynomials. Well, there's. if I say we're going to learn about polynomials, boy, there's so much stuff to learn about polynomials. I mean, you can just go on and on and on and on. So we're just going to start at the beginning and just do some basic things. Um, let's just do a couple vocab words here. I'm, on a quiz or a test, I'm not going to actually have you define anything, okay? I'll never say... You know, define polynomial. I'll never do that, okay? It's always working problems all the time. Um, but it is good to know some words. Uh, for instance, um, a poly, what does that prefix poly mean? Many. Many. And then nomials, I'm not sure exactly what the exact definition of that is, but it's, it's about terms, okay? How many terms do you have? So in algebra, our terms are, are uh, kind of separated by plus or minus signs. For instance, I'm just making this up off the top of my head. 2xy squared plus 4, I don't know, b C or something, okay? So there you go. How many terms do you have? If they're separated by plus or minus signs, how many terms do we actually have here? Three of them, good. So that's one, that's two, and that's three. Do you see them? They're being separated by these a minus sign and a plus sign. So there's three of them. So if there's three terms, instead of calling it a polynomial, we actually have a prefix for three. What would that be? Tri, tri. so that'd be a trinomial. All right, so three terms would be a trinomial All right, so that would be three terms. And then what do you think would be, what if we got rid of one of those? Okay, then you would have a what? A binomial. All right, that's not too hard, is it? If you know your prefixes. Binomial, and that's two terms. What about one term? If you just had one of these things, like it's a monomial, that's right. It's a monomial. And that would be one term. Okay. Now, you could have a lot of stuff with one term. Watch, you could have like 3ax squared y over 2z or something. That still is a monomial, that big old thing right there. But as soon as you put a plus something else, then you're starting to get more than just one term. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So you've probably heard those words before. Let's actually do some work with a couple of them. Um, you saw some squared stuff in there, so let's do, here's a little rule for uh, squaring things. We call this the product rule. So all the things we're going to be working with here are polynomials, but these are, this is probably more important than knowing that the word is polynomial or monomial or binomial and stuff like that. I mean, there are some, especially in Algebra 1, you'll probably, you, you would probably have some problems where they give you some polynomials and you have to tell whether it's a monomial, binomial, or trinomial, or how many terms there are, and what the degree of the term is, and all that kind of stuff, okay? We'll say, we'll let, you know, we'll save that for Algebra 1, okay? But for right now, let's just learn how to use some of these things. And the product rule is one of the most important rules you're going to use, especially when you're using exponents. And basically, it says this. If you have x to the a times x to the b. Now notice what I have here. The product rule works. Product means what? What are you doing when it says product rule? It's multiplying. Good. Okay, that's, that means it's the answer to the multiplication problem. So product means you're multiplying. But this is the product rule for, I guess I could have put this on here, for exponents. All right, it's so the product rule for exponents. So I've got exponents here. What are my exponents in this little situation here? A and B, good. What's the X, that big number on the bottom? What do we call that number? It's the base, good. That's the base. And this is the exponent. All right, so we need a rule on how to multiply these things together. And here's the rule. It's pretty basic. Again, you probably did this in Algebra 1, definitely did this in Algebra 2. So um, notice what's true about both of these bases that are being multiplied together. They're the same. The product rule only works when the bases are the same. Okay, so you can't do this if the bases are different. If you had x to the a times y to the b, you couldn't multiply them together. But if the bases are the same, then you can multiply them together. So what you do is you keep the base the same. So if the base is x, you just keep it the same. And there's a rule on what you do with the exponents. What was that rule? Do you remember? You add them up. That's right. You add up the exponents. So it's a plus b. So that's your basic product rule for exponents. Well, let's put this into practice. We'll use x as the base again. Let's say x to the third times x to the fifth. And I want to show you why you add them together. All right? Because if I had x to the third, isn't that the same as saying x times x times x? 
And then x to the fifth would be how many of them? Two, five. three, four, five. So if I was going to multiply all these together, what would you do? They all have the same base, x, and you just add up how many you have. Does it make sense? So if I add them all up, I got three of them here, five of them here, so what am I going to have? I'm going to have eight of them all together, aren't I? Everybody see that? So that's why we add the bases together. All right? It's not an addition problem, is it? It's a multiplication problem. These are all being multiplied together. I didn't put the dots here, but they're all being multiplied together. So it is a multiplication problem, but my rule says that I add the exponents together. Right? So that would be kind of a pain to do this every single time you had one of these problems, wouldn't it? So we just learned the rule. What would you do with them? You just added up how many of these x's you have. You got 8 of them, so it's 8, or it's x to the 8th. I mean, look, if you had x to the 34th times x to the 57th, it'd take a while, wouldn't it, to write 34 x's down and 57 x's down, then count them all up? All right, instead of doing that, that'd be a waste of time. So what do you do? You know, I'm going to have 34 of these x's, 57 of these x's, so what do I do? I add them all up, don't I? So this would be x to the, I don't know, what is that, 91? Okay, so you guys were doing that math in your head, weren't you? When I was <laughs> Good, so that's x to the 91st. So you add up the exponents. Pretty basic, isn't it? You've done a ton of this stuff last year, didn't you? Okay, good. So this is just trying to, and like I said at the beginning of the year, this college algebra class is kind of like Algebra 2, but it's just kind of like a reinforcement of Algebra 2. Maybe some things you didn't quite get in Algebra 2, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get here. And you will see some things in here that you did not do in Algebra 2. Um, but it's basically like a glorified Algebra 2 class, okay? It's just like Algebra 2 and a half, we'll call it, all right? But we call it college algebra. All right, let's uh, see what else I want to do here. This rule. All right. Uh, you could. Mm, let's see if they're using. All right. Let's do this one. Give me some room here. Let's change colors. A little boring. All just black and white, isn't it? So here we go. Write this one down. Six z to the fifth. It's in parentheses. It's being multiplied by 9z to the third cubed, and then uh, 2z squared, 2z squared. All right, and that's what they ask you to do. And it says find the product. Okay, so when it says find the product, it means just multiply those together. Now remember, that rule only works when you have a base and an exponent. If you just had regular numbers that are being multiplied, you just multiply them like normal, wouldn't you? All right, so let's take the regular numbers. The six, we call these, by the way, um, the numbers that are in, out in front. Does anybody remember what that name is? It starts with a C. I'll give you a hint. When you have a number out in front of a variable like this, if it's being multiplied by that variable, we have a, because we'll use that word a lot this year. Anybody know? It starts with a C. O. Coefficient. Very good. Okay, it's called the coefficient. Did I write it? Did I spell it right? Coefficient. I think that's right. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Um, looks a little weird. But it's coefficient. This number right here is a coefficient. It means it's being multiplied by that variable. So that product rule for exponents don't really, doesn't really apply to the 6, the 9, and the 2. What applies? Just basic regular multiplication, right? So you just multiply them straight up. So 6 times 9. What's 9 times 6? 54 times 2 is, in your head, 108. So you can do that without a calculator, can't you? So that's 108. Now let's do the bases. Look at all the bases. I got z, z, and z. So I can use the product rule, can I? Why? Because all the bases are the same. So what do we do with the exponents if the bases are the same? Window? I add them up. So I got what? 5, 3 is 8, and 2 is 10. So it's z to the 10th. And that's it. That's how you multiply those together. Pretty simple, isn't it? And you've done plenty of that stuff, I'm sure. All right. What if we did this? Uh, this works for that rule works for negative exponents as well. For instance, if I had a to the I don't know fifth times a to the negative third, we haven't really talked to you know at all about negative exponents, but the rule still works. You got the same base, so you keep the base the same. And what do you do with the exponents here? You add them up. So it's five plus negative three. What's five plus negative three? It's two negative three. 5 plus negative 3. It's the same as 5 minus 3, which is a 2. All right, so it's a to the second, or a squared. Everybody with me on that? What if I did this? Check this out. 
if I said a to the fifth times a to the negative fifth. Hmm. One. Maybe a to the what? A to the one? Zero. Say, to the zero. It'd be a to the zero, wouldn't but it? Anything to the zero power equals one. Okay, but I want us to see why anything to the zero power is equal to one. You're absolutely right. But let's see why. You might have done this in Algebra 1, definitely in Algebra 2. I've said that a few times today, haven't I? <laughs> so, um, do you remember what we do with negative exponents? If it's being multiplied by something? Do you remember? You ever, you ever see negative exponents before? Yeah. Flip it to the bottom. Does anybody remember that? So really, if I wanted to, I could say, well, this is a to the fifth. Take this, flip it to the bottom. But if I flip it to the bottom, what do I have to do to that exponent? A to the fifth. Make it positive, change the sign of it. Anybody remember that from Algebra 2? Okay. All right. Are you awake that day? Good. So that's the same thing as this. This thing right here is the same thing as this, which is the same thing as a to the zero, isn't it? All right. What's a to the fifth divided by a to the fifth? What's anything divided by itself? It's a one. So look at this. So what's a to the zero equal to? It's one. So anything to the zero power that a represents any number. Any number to the zero power is equal to one. That's a pretty important thing right there. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Seeing why a to the zero is equal to one. You may have been taught, I don't know, you may have been shown this, but you may, I know a lot of people are taught, well just remember it, it's a rule, a to the zero is, or, or anything to the zero power is one. Just remember it. But I always like to know why certain things happen, don't you? Yeah, and that's why it happens. They never I bet you I did if I taught it. I just did. All right, anyway, there you go. Anything to the zero is one. For instance, if I had five to the zero, what's five to the zero equal to? One. It's one. It's not one times five. A lot of people think that. Okay, I see a lot of students do that. One times five is five. Five to the zero is five. No, it's not. Five to the zero is one. What if I did this? What if I had negative three in parentheses to the zero? What's that equal to? Hmm, now we pause a little bit, don't we? Yeah, What's, what was your other option that you were thinking? It could be what? What do you think? Negative. Maybe it's negative one? I'm not really sure. But what's being taken to the zero? This whole entire parentheses, isn't it? It doesn't matter. I could have 15 different terms inside that parentheses. But if that whole parentheses is being taken to the zero power, what's my answer? One. It's just one. Because anything, anything taken to the zero power is equal to one. Does that make any sense? Okay. What if I had... Um, 5x squared y z to the third, and that whole thing was to the zero. What's that one. equal to? It's equal to one. All right, I'm beating a dead horse now, aren't I? All right, what if I did this? Let's change it a little bit. What if I had negative three to the zero like this? You say, wait a minute, you've already done that problem. It's the same thing. Negative one. But is it the same thing? Why do you say negative one, Tiffany? Because three. The zero is only applying to the Very three, good. Not the negative. That's right. The zero, that exponent, is only being an exponent to that base three right here, not to the negative. The negative is kind of floating out front, right? We've used that term a few times already this year. So that negative is kind of floating out front. That negative, or that uh, zero, is not being applied to the negative here because it's not in parentheses. So that negative floats out front, and all you do is go three to the zero. Three to the zero is one. So that would be negative one right there. So that tricks people up a little bit. But there you go. We okay with that? All right, enough of that. Let's use, let's do the power rule now. Let's get a different color here. Let's go this nice purple. Power rule. Sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? The power rule. Um, let's, actually, you know what? Do they do the quotient rule? Do they do it after this? They probably just consider that. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do the power rule right now. Watch this. What if I had um, x, oh, we'll make this easy, x to the third squared. Now let's think about what's going on. What do I do when I square something? I multiply it what? By itself. By itself. That's right. Okay, I multiply it by itself. So really, this would be x cubed times what? x 
x cubed. So really, the power rule just basically breaks down into what rule that we just learned? What is this rule now? The product rule, that's right. So really, the power rule is kind of like an offshoot of the product rule. So um, if we were to do this, x to the third times x to the third, keep the base the same, add the exponents, what's that? x to the sixth. Instead of going through that every single time, though, look at what I can do with these two numbers. That's right, just multiply the exponents together. So if you have an exponent being taken to another power, to another exponent, you multiply those exponents together. All right? You could get away with doing this if you wanted to, but again, what if you had some crazy numbers? What if you had x to the third to the... Uh, I don't know, to the 15th power. Do you really want to go x cubed times x cubed times x cubed 15 yeah. times? No, that would be a pain, wouldn't it? So we learn the rule. What's the rule? Keep the base the same, and what do you do with the exponents? Multiply, Multiply them together, and what would that be? 45. To the 45th, so x to the 45th power. All right? Does it make sense? Let's write it without just regular numbers. Let's say um, x to the a and that's being taken to the b power. So if I wanted to write this in a very general sense, I would say it's x to the what? A, a b. b. Yeah. Good. To the a b power, right. Not to the a plus b, to the a times b, right? They're being multiplied together. All right. Let's do an example. We already did a little bit of an example here. Let's do one that's a little bit tougher. Watch this. 2 to the 5th over b to the fourth. Hmm. And that is cubed. Look at that crazy thing. So what in the world are we going to do here? Some people might take 2 to the fifth and then simplify it. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Um, and then take it to the third. But I would just do it like this. You've got a base, don't you? So I'll keep the base the same. And you got an exponent being taken to another power. So what's the rule again? Multiply the exponents together. 5 times 3 is 15. So it's 2 to the 15. Now look, this is a fraction though. So everything in this parentheses is being taken to the third power. So we did the top. We did the numerator. Now we got to do the denominator, the bottom. So b to the fourth to the third. Same kind of thing, isn't it? You got an exponent being taken to another power. So you keep the base the same. And what do you do with the exponents? Multiply them together, that gives us 12, and you can just keep your answer just like that. I mean, if you really wanted to put 2 to the 15th in your calculator, you're going to get some big old gigantic number. I don't think it's, I don't think it's important to get just that regular old number. It's going to be so big that I wouldn't even worry about it. I would keep it just 2 to the 15th. Now, if it was like 2 cubed, you would simplify that, wouldn't you? If it's a relatively small number, you know, and where do we draw the line? I don't know, but 2 to the 15th, that's way too big. Jerry, you got a calculator right there. Put 2 to the 15th in there. See what you get. See, do you really want to write that big old number down? No. Mm. I like 2 to the 15th better, don't you? Yep, so I would just keep it like that. All right, How we're good. How about you, Jared? <laughs> yeah, I think he, wants, he would just rather have 2 to the 15th as well. All right, let's see what else I want to get to. Oh, we've got a few more things to do. Let's, um, got a few minutes here. Let's do some adding and subtracting. So we worked with exponents. Let's uh, add and subtract polynomials. Then we're going to multiply and divide, and hopefully we'll have time to finish this in class. Um, if you're going to add or subtract polynomials, we always add, do you remember this phrase? Like what? Terms, right? That's familiar to you, isn't it? So you only add like terms. So if I had like 3x plus... 5x plus 2y minus 7y. Okay, if I wanted to figure that out right there, which ones can I only add up? I, can, I can't add like all four of them together and just get one simple answer. I can only add the ones with the x's, right? So the 3x and the 5x I can add together. And so when we add like terms, the rule is you, you just add the coefficients. Remember that word I said we're going to use? All right, so we add the coefficients and just keep the term the same. So in this one, I got 3x and I got 5x. It's kind of like having three apples and five apples. Then you have what? Eight apples. Eight apples, or in this case, eight x's. Okay? So you just keep the term the same, the x. Just add the coefficients. That's all you do. Same thing here with the y's. Let's add those together. 2y, and this is a negative 7y. So basically, it's just 2 minus 7. What's 2 minus 7? 
negative 5. So we put a minus 5, and don't forget the term, you put the y there. So Very simple for addition, five. okay? So we did addition and we did subtraction, and you leave it like that. You can't simplify that because these are not like terms. You can't add them together. It's like having five apples and, or eight apples and five, five bananas, bananas, okay? You can't add a, well, you could put them into a blender, get a smoothie out of it or something, okay? But you can't just get one piece of fruit, right, when you add them up, all right? So um, you get, they're two separate pieces of fruit. They're separate X, separate Y, and you're good to go there, all right? Let's do one that's a little more complicated, then we'll do some multiplication because we are running just a tad short time here. Um, okay, let's do this. Write this down. Hopefully on Monday I'll have my new glasses and I won't have to take them off to see all the time. <laughs> Isn't that weird? I always got to pull my glasses, especially when it's dark. It's really hard to see. But my eye doctor guaranteed me that I'd be able to see better close up with my new glasses. All right, there we go. All right, let's take a look at this. Now, we are going to add like terms, but we have to do something first. We see some parentheses here. Uh, to tell you the truth, this parentheses and this one right here for that first term, it's really not doing anything for us, is it? Because there's nothing in front of it, all right? There's nothing being multiplied. You don't have to distribute anything through. So really, that parentheses is kind of kind of not even need, needed. Yeah, it's a little bit useless, I think. This parentheses is very important. Why is that? Because you've got a minus in front of it. Think of it as a minus 1. So what is that minus doing to everything in this parentheses? It's, what's it doing? It's changing the sign of everything, right? So we have to distribute that negative. Think of it as a negative 1. We have to distribute that negative 1 through that whole parentheses. So let's rewrite it again. And then we'll get rid of that last parentheses. This way we won't have any parentheses and we'll be good to go. So it's minus m cubed, right? Minus a positive is a minus again. We change the sign is what that negative is doing. This is a negative. Well, this negative, negative, makes it what? Positive. Good. And then, there you go. Now, we're not finished, though, are we? Okay. The whole idea for this is to add stuff together. Now, can we add everything together all at once? No. Now, we can only add the like terms. So, let's find out which ones are like terms. Um, well, I got an m cubed. Do I? This is an m squared. Are they like terms? Nope. They both have m in it. No, they got to be exactly the same. The exponents have to be the same as well, okay, as well as the variable. So this is m cubed. This is m squared, which is not a like term. Is there any other like terms with m cubed? M cubed. Not m squared. M cubed, right, this m cubed. I guess I should have circled the minus, too, but that's okay. Let's do this. We'll do this in blue. Negative 3m cubed minus how many here? What's the one coefficient? Right, 1m cubed. What's negative 3 minus 1? Negative 4, what? m cubed. Don't add those exponents together. A lot, of, a lot of kids, I see that a lot, adding the exponents. Remember, you're adding like terms. You just keep the term the same, all right? So make sure you do that. What about this m squared? Are there any other m squareds? Yeah, there's this minus 7. So let's do that. Negative 8m squared minus 7m squared is? Right, minus 15m squared. Okay, hang on just a second. And then we've got plus 4, plus 3, which is plus, plus seven. 7. And then that's it. You can't do anything more with that. All right? And there you go. Um, I think there might be a couple problems on your worksheet with multiplication. We didn't hit that yet today. Um, but my guess is you probably know how to do that stuff. So give it a shot. Let me give you a worksheet before you go.